Hello. In this video, we'll continue the discussion of fractional flow and our solution for one dimensional incompressible two phase flow in a porous medium. But before we get back into the equations, I want physically to describe two types of process by which you can recover oil from a piece of rock. So here's my piece of rock. And there are only two types of process. One, which is sort of the obvious one, actually, when, when you think of it, is I am going to inject water here at a high pressure. Okay, flow goes from high to low pressure, and the water essentially is going to push out the oil. Now, if that's the case, then what dominates is essentially advection, right? How the water flows is more or less going to be controlled by the mobility of the water compared to the total movement. And we'll We'll go through some numbers to show that that's correct. And the way, way if you're worried about, well, maybe there are other things, I mean, there's gravity and capillary pressure, those effects are going to be relatively small because we're looking at ejection, not at a small piece of rock of this size, but over a, a reservoir that may be kilometers in extent, where you're injecting water at megapascals, higher pressure than you're producing oil and water at a production well and that pressure far exceeds the capillary. So for most reservoir applications of flow in porous media, what you're really concerned about is the advection, you're injecting water, and there will be also an effect of gravity. But capillary pressure, the capillary forces, although they dominate at the pore scale, are relatively small at the field scale. Typical capillary pressures of a few kilopascals are nothing compared with the megapascals of pressure difference. But there is an exception. After all, the simplest thing I could do with this piece of rock to show a displacement process would be to put it in a beaker of water. If I do that, I'm not injecting anything. Actually, you can work out the effects of gravity is quite small. It's all controlled by capillary forces. So that's interesting for an experiment you might do at home, so to speak. Um, but what does it mean in terms of reservoir displacements? Well, if we have fractured reservoirs, when I inject water, the fractures are a short circuit. The fractures fill with water. They're the fast flow parts. But they will surround what's called the matrix, which is just ordinary rock, okay, with water. And so the only way in which oil can be displaced from this rock is, in fact, by an imbibition process. And in that case, we completely surround this rock with water. If water goes into the pore space, an equal and opposite volume of oil needs to escape. And in fact, the total velocity is therefore by definition zero. Okay, so this is a capillary controlled um, displacement called spontaneous imbibition. Where actually, because the total velocity is zero, and if you're looking at a relatively small piece of rock, actually even up to a meter across, Gravity is relatively small compared to capillary forces. In fact, it's the capillary pressure that dominates. Okay, so let's, let's put that in a bit more of a mathematical framework and then discuss what it implies in terms of the equations. We go to the whiteboard. Okay, and we'll write out, as we did before, the equation for the fractional flow or for the water velocity. In fact, it's probably easier if I write the water velocity rather than the fractional flow. So QW was lambda W over lambda T QT. So that was the advective term, if you recall. Then we're going to have a term that is due to gravity, and I can't remember what color I use, but uh, that doesn't matter. I'll just do it in a different color. K, lambda W, oil. And I write this now as delta rho GX, where delta rho is the density difference, the water density minus the oil density. And then we have another term, which is also positive as we described before, 
Okay. So let's look at the order of magnitude of these terms. And there, there are lots of ways in which we can think about this. And none of them are, uh, one might say, totally satisfactory. You can look at pressure gradients. You can look at the magnitude of these terms. But let's do it in terms of the magnitude of these terms, OK? And let's, by definition, say that this advective term right, has a relative size of one. So I'm going to look at the size of these compared to this one. So what is QT? QT is total velocity. It's the total volume flowing per unit area per unit time. Um, typically between injection production wells, you may have pr pressure differences a few megapascals, but what about the speed? Well, speed, we're not really talking about speed, we're talking about a Darcy velocity. But typically when you think about water injection, you may have injectors and producers that are a few hundred meters apart, and you may be having a water injection scheme for decades, right? 10, 20, maybe even 30 years. So we're basically, the water's moving about 10 meters a year, okay? That's three centimeters a day. And a day is 86,000, something like that, seconds, about 10 to the five seconds. So we're looking, at velocities here and of course this isn't a true velocity but we're looking at something that's around about 10 to the minus 6 or maybe even 10 to the minus 7 meters per second okay, so we want an order of magnitude of this 10 to the minus 6. Now let's look at these terms typical density difference between oil and water maybe 200 300 kilograms per cubic meter so let's say it's 200 and let's imagine we have vertical flow. So imagine we've got we've uh, got water at the top of the reservoir and it's just moving down under gravity. So this will be a 10. Now compared to this one, if I'm assuming that this is one, then lambda w of lambda t times qt is given a one, a unit amount. So what I have to do is I have to look at this relative to k and qt. So K, what's the typical permeability in a reservoir? Say 100 millidarses allows quite nice flow. OK, so that would be about 10 to the minus 13 square metres. So if we look at these terms, right, and then we've also got a lambda oil. And this will be a relative permeability to by viscosity. And a typical oil viscosity, water viscosity is about uh, 10 to the minus 3 pascal seconds. Oil viscosity velocity may be higher, but then the relative permeability um, may be lower. A typical magnitude of this, right, because it's one over the viscosity is about 10 to the 3, and that's in strict SI units, okay? So this will be in Pascal seconds, so it's 1 over Pascal seconds. So if we look at these terms, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we've got 2 times 10 to the 6 times 10 to the minus 13, and that is relative to QT, so we divide by QT. So the relative magnitude of this is that's going to be 12 is about 0.2. So if this has a magnitude of one, right, then the gravity term is not insignificant. Right? It's typically smaller, right, but it's not something we can just ignore. Okay, um, so as written, it's, it's about 20%, right? roughly speaking, about 20% of the effect. Okay, let's let's take this uh, last term. We can be be a little bit quicker with this. That's ten to the minus thirteen. This term, as we said, was ten to the three. We're dividing by QT. What about this DPC by dx? Well, a typical capillary pressure. Here we're looking at the effect of capillary pressure in the middle of the field, where the saturation is sort of a mid range. So people often get this wrong with capillary pressure. They say, oh, let's look at the end point where we're sort of ramming in one of the phases and we, you know, we maxed it out and we got this huge capillary pressure. That's not what we're interested in because that's near the end point. We're looking in the middle of the field. Um, we're looking at uh, typical capillary pressures are only of the order of about um, one to 10 kilopascals. So certainly for the rock of permanent about 10 to the minus 13. So this is about 10 to the four pascals. The difference between the well is at least 100 meters. Okay. So a pre typical pressure gradient is about 10 to the 4 or 100. So if we look at this, okay, this just a rough orders of magnitude, 
Okay, so this is 10 to the minus 13 times 10 to the 7, right? Over here, we've got 10 to the minus 4, okay? So this is about, if we look at this, this is 11, so this is about one part in 100, 0.41. Okay? And it may be even lower, typical capillary pressures may only be 10 to the minus 3, in which case it's 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 okay? So what you find is, Advection is normally the dominant effect for fluid flow. Then we have gravity, which is not insignificant. And capillary pressure, capillary pressure gradients here, um, contribute, you know, 1% or 0.1% to the overall flow. So most normal flow, right, where we're sort of injecting at the field scale, um, basically what we can do is we can ignore this term. Okay, it's small. Now, many reservoir engineers are nervous at this point. In fact, often they find this type of analysis really concerning because, oh, well, it depends. It depends on the, on the saturation. It depends on this. I need to make it more accurate. I need a simulation model. I need... Yeah, but that obscures then what's going on. You stuff lots of things in. It all looks complicated. No, as an order of magnitude, the capillary pressure is small. The only exception, as I said, was when you had this countercurrent flow where QT was actually zero. And this term, we were looking um, here at uh, the gravitational uh, effect, and this, this would appear to be of reasonable significance. But then here, we're typically looking at imbibition into tighter rocks, lower permeability formation. So the capillary pressures may, may be uh, 10 to the 5. And the distance, often we have major fractures spaced every metre. So here, in fact, this may be uh, 10 to the 5. Okay, so this will be 0.1. And instead of 100 meters, it may be one meter. And so this can be often 10 or 100 times larger than the gravitational effect over about a meter. So when we're looking at um, countercurrent flow, if we're looking at a fractured domain, heavily fractured with major fractures every meter or so, actually this term dominates. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to solve this equation in two limits. Okay, and I want to get rid of now all the other material because these were just approximate order of magnitude estimates. If you don't quite follow it, you know, put in your own numbers yourself. Don't, don't try and fuss over every single thing that I've written. You know, what's a typical order of magnitude? Okay, so I'm going to deliberately remove everything here but leave the equations up. Okay, so we're going to consider two cases. So the first case is where I ignore this one and I only consider this. Okay. And this is what's going to be called buckley leverett analysis. Okay. On the other hand, I'm also going to take a case where I only consider this term and I ignore these two. And that's going to be the analysis of spontaneous inhibition. Okay, so those are the two limits I'm going to talk about. Okay, so this will be the second limit, and this will be the first thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to begin to present what I would call the buckley leverett analysis. And I show then how to solve that equation in general. And then I'm going to do the same for the spontaneous imbibition. You might say, well, that, that's sort of, I'm sort of getting it physically, but I, still mathematically, it's a little bit unsatisfying. After all, why don't I just solve this equation entirely? Well, the reason is that if I do the buckley leverett analysis, I can write QW I can write QW is FW QT. Okay? And FW is a function of saturation only. Okay, because these terms are just saturation dependent functions. So it turns into a nonlinear partial differential equation because it's nonlinear in saturation, but it's just FW is just a function of saturation and it's just first order. If we look at the underlying partial differential equation that we're going to solve, 
right? This is uh, first order in space and time, and the fractional flow is a nonlinear function of saturation. If on the other hand, we include the spontaneous imbibition term, this term, the dPc by dx, can be written as dPc by dS, which is a function of saturation only. That's why I've got a straight derivative. But then we have a dSw by dx. So in general, this equation here, the fractional flow or the QW is just a function of saturation. Here we have a nonlinear function of saturation, but also a saturation gradient. Okay, so we have d by dx and another d by dx. So we have a, a second derivative. And that in general cannot be solved. People have tried, but we can't solve the general equation with both capillary pressure and abection and gravity combined. We can do one limit or the other limit. And indeed, just the spontaneous imbibition piece where we don't have this nonlinear term, terms, um, even there, it's only recently that it's been um, acknowledged that we, could, that we can solve all equations. So what I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to start with the buckley leverage um, uh, equation. So um, if, I'm, if I am really ignoring this term, I'm going to ignore it. So I'm going to Okay, and so I'm going to write this equation now so that it's more explicit what uh, my is my fractional flow, which I'm going to write in a moment, is just a function of saturation. Okay. So this is some complex saturation dependent term where Fw is lambda w t plus k over qt. Okay, so that's, that's um, the equation that we have. So I'm going to pause here because I just wanted to, to show these two different physical phenomena that occur, and then end up with the, the equation here with both fractional flow okay, and with the partial differential equation that we're going to solve. And this is, as I said, it's first order in, in distance and time. So it's partial differential equation, two variables, a highly nonlinear function of saturation. I think we can, it should be self-evident. Um, but it is analytically solvable. So I think we'll pause there. Uh, in the subsequent video, obviously, we'll go through uh, how we construct a solution.